mind today is the new feature in Metabase to upload data into your Metabase and analyze it and report on it alongside data that you have from, for example, your library management system, if you're using Metabase for that. So I'm gonna give you a quick tour through how this functionality works and an example of how I think it really leverages the power of the data that you have in your library management system with data that you can get from elsewhere, from other sources and upload into Metabase to use it for demonstrating significant challenges that you face or opportunities that you have for your library service. So first of all, to switch this functionality on, you need to make sure that in the admin settings, if you have permission to go into those admin settings or if one of your admins can do this, uh, that under uploads, you've enabled uploads and then you've chosen which of the databases uh, that you want to be uploading that data into. Now, bear in mind, you can what, what the upload does is creates a data model within that database um, and it means that you can report on data within the database and within the uploaded data. But what you can't do is report on that uploaded data in this database against information from another database. You'd have to upload it into that database as well. So um, there's an opportunity to add a prefix to the tables it's going to create as it uploads the data. Coming back out of the admin, how do I actually then get data into the system? Well, what you need to do is go into your personal collection or any collection actually. So if you've got a shared collection, you can upload into the shared collection. Uh, I've been uploading into my personal collection at this point. So uh, you then need to navigate to your file manager on your device that you're using. And here I've got a number of UK postcode uh, files, which have data about UK postcodes. They're in uh, CSV, comma separated format. And I can simply drag them into this area to start uploading them. Now, bear in mind that the maximum upload file size is 50 megabytes. And that's also the maximum upload file size, uh, or that's the maximum file size for uh, manipulating data, CSV files in a, an Excel um, or, or Google Sheets application. So you'll need to make sure that whatever data you're trying to import is limited to those sorts of file sizes and below. So here I'm going to take a, a postcode file and I'm going to drag it there to upload it. And it's saying here that it's starting to upload that data to my personal collection. And then it'll give me an acknowledgement to say when it's done that. I'm just going to leave it there running for a second. And if I scroll down on this page, you'll see um, that there are other files that I've already uploaded. And you can see the little icon there to say that they've been imported as a data model. Now, in, in my view here, in my personal collection, it doesn't give you the, uh, the prefix, the upload prefix that I specified earlier. But if I go to actually browse the data in the database, and if I go and look at the Koha demo, de demo uh, database, was the one that uh, we were looking at, here I can see all of the normal Koha tables that I would expect. And as I scroll down, I can see that here are the upload files, the ones that I've, I've done already. So there is the one that I've just uploaded, the CA postcode prefix file. And that's literally just been uploaded now. And I can click into that just like I can click into any other database table and see the data within it. So here we can see our CA postcodes and then we can see other information that's held within that data set. And just in the same way, I can filter, summarize, and basically start to build reports on that data using all of the usual Metabase functionality. However, where the power of this really comes is in linking such data, so geographic data in this case, uh, with the data that you have in the library management system. So for example, we have information uh, mapping uh, postcode areas against local authority areas, against uh, super output areas. And also we have deprivation index data in the UK, um, again, mapped to super output areas 
and local authority areas. So what I've done is I've created a query uh, where I've taken information about our borrowers, and then I've linked that, the borrower information, which has address data in it, to the postcode file um, using the zip code and the postcode uh, to, to match on. Taken those previous results, and then I've linked that to the, the, the lower super output area deprivation data. Um, and I'm matching there using the previous results postcode information to match against the local super, uh, low super output area code. And then I'm putting a count summarization in there. And what this has given me is uh, the ability to map this data here. So here we have um, by low super output area. So these are example low super output areas in the in the Derby, Derbyshire location. Um, and I should stress this is all demo data. So this is all false data. There's none of this that is, is real in any way. But what I'm mapping here is the percentage of active patrons uh, as a percentage of that low super output area, that geographic area's uh, total population. And comparing that sort of percentage of how well engaged are, are, is, is library use within the, that area uh, and comparing that with the deprivation index data. So where 10 is an area of low deprivation and one is an area of high deprivation. So in a poorer area, this particular one here, low, um, high deprivation, so an index of one, um, but with, I'm going to say demo data, moderate patron engagement. So we've got 3% of that local population using the library actively. Whereas if I compare that with someone further down here, again, in this particular um, location, deprivation index of one, so a poor area, and uh, a percentage engagement of 0.0449. So a tiny amount of patrons using the library or, or residents, percentage of the population, remember, of residents of that area using the library. So this is, for example, uh, would give a library an indication of these are two poorer areas in poorer areas in our catchment. Um, in the one, we're managing to engage and get library use. And in the other, we're not managing to engage and get library use. What are the reasons for that? Are we linked to a school in one area where we have good links um, and not in the other area? Have we done events in that area and not in the other area? So uh, I believe this is a way that you could truly leverage the power of Metabase to get really meaningful insights into your data. If you have any questions about importing data of this nature into Metabase and working with these data models against your library management system data, please do get in touch. But I hope you'll agree that this is a game changing functionality for Metabase and really uh, will enhance your ability to use data to drive change in your organization. Thanks very much for watching.